Good morning, game makers. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a little player information or a GUI for our game. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new font. So I went over to fonts, right clicked, said create new. Uh, this, all of this is on personal preference. So I went ahead and found a, a, a font that I was pretty satisfied with, a set of time, uh, or, or sorry, sorry, set a size, and I uh, didn't want to bore you with with that information as I looked through the millions of, of fonts that were here. Um, so uh, there's my font. I think I'm going to go ahead with this one, um, and uh, now I'm ready to start doing some some things. So uh, in my controller, I'm going to use a, a new event. Uh, I'm not super familiar with it. I don't. I did use it in Game Maker 1.4. Uh, but that new event um, is game start. And so game start, I assume, only runs when the game first plays. And I'm gonna set up some variables. Now in the scrolling shooter, I use the built-in variables, the built-in global variables. But here, um, I'm just gonna do it a, a slightly different way, just because I want you to see that uh, you can set up your own global variables. And to do so, you always type in global dot, and I'm gonna go ahead with player lives, and I'm gonna set that to three. I'm gonna say uh, player score, and you can see that these are, are showing up a different color than um, what we're familiar uh, with from the scrolling shooter. And that's because these are user, uh, user assigned variables. So I went with player lives, I went with player, um score and and global high school whoa that's not what i wanted score and uh so these things are uh, when the game starts are all going to be set um you can see that it does give me a warning but it only says that that although these variables are set they're never accessed yet in any of the code and that's okay because we're going to go ahead and and uh show that so I also, while I'm in the controller, I'm gonna create a draw event. And the draw event, remember, is used anytime you wanna draw something that is not associated with an object. It doesn't have a sprite. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the color. So draw set color. And uh, all the colors in Game Maker are prefixed with a C. And that makes sense. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and set my font. So draw set font and then I used font game. It recognizes that so instantly becomes red. Uh, the next one I see in tutorials all the time and honestly I don't know how big of a, a deal. Um, it's the horizontal alignment and in this case FA I'm not sure what that means but um, it's always part of the alignment so we're gonna go we're gonna set it to the left and then I'm gonna go ahead and draw the player score. So draw text and then inside of the parentheses I'm gonna put some quotes and whenever you put actually it looks like if I look down here I need the X and Y first so the X I'm gonna use 15 so fixed 15 pixels from the left eight pixels from the right I'm gonna do some uh, quotes and when you do quotes it's gonna game maker is gonna draw exactly what's inside of those quotes string and string simply is a command that takes computer data and makes it into something that uh, the player can read. And the score is going to be global.player score. And one more parenthesis should close that out. I'm just checking my notes. I don't want to make any mistakes and make this video unnecessarily long. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Um, and then I'm going to also display the high score on the right side of the screen. So draw, set, align, FA right. And I'm going to draw text. And let's see, where did I find a good place for that? Was room width minus 15, eight pixels down the screen, um, in quotes high score. So it's going to write it exactly that way, plus string global high score. So the high score is going to be set at the end of the game uh, each time. So if the current score at the end of the game is higher than the 
current high score, then the high score is going to be uh, get replaced. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up to show our lives as an image. So I'm going to set up a local variable and it's going to be position X. And position X is uh, basically how many pixels are going to be in between our um, I'm going to get rid of that first underscore is is going to be the, the the space between our little life images. Um, now here's a loop that only exists in uh, Game Maker, and it's um, called repeat. Now I've not seen this inside of any other programming language. Normally you'd use a for loop or a while loop, but Game Maker will let you repeat inside of these these brackets the number of whatever number is inside of this. So in case in this case if there's three lives, it's going to repeat the following instructions. And I'm going to use a extended command, so draw sprite extended, and that's going to give me um, a whole bunch of things that I can put in here that are going to be useful. So you can see down here below Game Maker is in code does something super helpful and that gives you what arguments need to be inside of these. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what sprite we're going to do and we're going to use the bat sprite. Um, zero is the sub image. The X position is going to be at position X, so it's going to be at 64. Um, and then, of course, each time it runs through this, we're going to add 64 so that our, our sprites are spaced out to accommodate the size. And, and I've done this ahead of time, so I'm pretty sure it's going to look OK. So room height minus 16 is its Y position. We're going to go um, at X scale of 0.25, which means it's going to condense it. 0.25 horizontally, it's going to condense it um, or contract it, or I'm not really sure what the word is, but it's going to make it uh, one fourth its original size. Let's see, one is the rotation, and we don't want it to rotate, so one means keep the existing rotation. The color um, that we're going to blend with it, so you'll notice that um, the, the color won't be as bright. It's going to be tinted or, or faded out a little bit. And the last thing we're going to do is set its alpha. So 0.5 means it's going to be half as opaque as the actual sprite itself. And the last thing we're going to do is make sure each time this repeats, um, it puts a little bit of space um, in between. So let's see what that all is going to look like. And let's see if I've made any mistakes. And um, so what we should see is we should see a score on the left, a high score on the right, and down at the bottom, we should see the number of lives we have left represented by a sprite that's had these effects applied to it. So let's take a look. And did I get it right? As you can see down here to the left, 64 pixels from the left of the screen, we have our first life, second life, third life, up here we have score, and over here we have high score. Now, they're not in a great position, um, but I'll, I can go back and fix those a little bit later, but we have it all on our screen. But what we don't have is anything that will affect these. So when I lose a life, for example, nothing happens down here. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna go to the, um, no, not the sprite, but the object ball, and we're gonna go to where we lose a ball. So. Let's find that in the code. So um, right here, if y is greater than room height plus 16, ball lost at bottom of the room. So what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is, um, of course, all of the all of these things should only happen if lives is greater than zero. So I'm going to say if global dot player lives is greater than zero, then we are going to um, put the ball back at the top of the screen. Um, and that's all fine and good, but we don't lose a life yet. So um, the first thing we should do is uh, global player lives 
minus equals one. So that's going to take a life away. And if global player lives is greater than zero, then it's going to um, put the ball back at the top and uh, sort of reset the game. But what happens if lives is not greater than zero? Well, I'm glad you asked. So what we're going to do is then say else um, with object control. And uh, let's go ahead and say game over equals true. Um, so we're going to, you, you can see we got some problems here. Um, and that's mostly because game object control doesn't have a variable called um, game over. And then uh, what a, there's some other things going on here that I, I might need to figure out. Um, game over equals true. Well, I'm not sure what those errors are just yet, um, but let's go back to object control and say what happens if game over is true. So in the create event, of course, naturally we want game over to equal the false. Uh, actually, let's do that in the game start. Um, no, we can't. Can we do that? I don't think we can. Uh, so game over equals the false. And then um, here in the step event, we can say if game over is true, then what? Well, we're going to go ahead and um, allow the player to, first of all, if score global player score is greater than global dot high score, then global player high score equals score. Global player, oops, it's not global player, it's global high score equals global player score. Um, and then, then what? Then we're gonna, I guess, uh, allow the player to, to click anywhere on the screen. That's what it looks like I have here. So if game over is true, then we'll set, reset the score. And if keyboard check VK any key, which is an option, then we're going to set everything back to its defaults. So global global oops global player score equals zero global player lives equals three and room equals um, zero, which is the first room in the game. So I probably have some mistakes here. So let's find out what happens. First of all, let's find out if we can lose a life. Let's see if our code even runs. So in the ball step event, um, looks like we have some problems. So I'm gonna go look at that real quick and I'll be right back with you. Well, it looks like I just need to go ahead and fix this and say with object control, game over equals true. I guess I could also have said object control dot game over equals the true. Um, but it, since I combined those two, it did not like that. Um, so I'll leave it like this. Go ahead and play our game. Uh, looks like it's gonna run. I've got three lives, I've got a score. Um, I don't have anything to change the score yet. Maybe that'll be a, another video for another time. Let's try to lose a life. And you can see that now only two lives are being displayed on the screen. What happens if I lose another one? Okay, we still have one left. And then finally, well, that was a bug that I did not anticipate. Um, well, I'm gonna have to fix that at some point, but uh, let's go ahead and replay the game real quick. Uh, really, that was that was weird. I wonder what uh, what caused that to happen.
Oh, programming. All right. So lose one life, uh, lose a second life, and then lose a third life. And then I should not have a ball anymore um, because that part was skipped. And now I should be able to hit any key and restart. Well, I got some bugs, but uh, I'll work through those. And uh, perhaps my my video, the second video of the week will be squashing those bugs. I do have a score, I do have a high score, and I do have lives at display. Um, I just got a few things to fix. So I will, uh, I will work on that, and uh, that'll be the end of this video for today. Thanks for watching.